So one of the big benefits of a digital note taking system or a second brain is that it frees you to create, to share, to express your thoughts and ideas and your stories. But in order to express, you need a way to process the information so that what you initially captured can be expressed, but with your flavor. Enter the code method. This is a, a neatly packaged acronym from Tiago Forte that stands for capture, organize, distill, and express. In this video, we're gonna break down the four stages of the code method and how this can help you live a life of creating. A powerful thing about a second brain is that it's carefully curated and personalized because it only contains stuff that resonates with you. The definition of resonate is to relate harmoniously. It strikes a chord. So when you come across something that strikes a chord within you, that's when you capture it. My friend, don't discount the quotes that you come across that make you tear up or the ideas or the thoughts that are not fully fleshed out. These are hints of your unique design and the things that you've been thinking about and they will reveal patterns, but you have to capture them in order to see the patterns. Jot the imperfect things down and let them marinate for a little bit. All right, Greg, I've captured something, now what? Now it's time to organize, but we're gonna organize for actionability. Our natural way of organizing information is by topic. It's, it's almost like a library, right? That's the way we are used to finding information, um, is to think of it and here's a topic and then there are subtopics and then there are subtopics within those subtopics. The problem with that method though is that it becomes very complicated with the many layers. Right, so we wanna organize instead for actionability. Now, if the goal is to eventually use your knowledge to be able to add value to somebody, then we need to shift our focus from the library method to the PARA method, which is another uh, acronym from Tiago Forte. PARA stands for projects, areas, resources, and archive. Projects are things that you're working on right now. They have a deadline. It could be cleaning the gutters in your house. It could be finishing a blog post. It could be planning a vacation. Uh, these things are here and now the things that you're working on. And then we have areas, also known as areas of responsibility. These are ongoing commitments in your life. Think of things like marriage or parenting or health or finances. They don't really ever go away, but you need to maintain them, right? So you have these pieces of content sometimes that you are capturing and they don't necessarily fit into a project, but they do fit into an area of your life and that would help you with that area. And then we have resources. This is where some people get stuck, but the way that, that I like to think of it and the way that Tiago explained it in his book is resources are topics of interest, right? So you may have a resource uh, that is helpful in an area or a resource that's helpful in a project. Um, but these resources, what he calls resources, is more of like a topic of interest or passions that you have, hobbies. And finally, we have archive. So any projects that you complete will go here. So you don't, you're not removing and deleting notes. Everything stays in your system, in your digital note-taking system. Um, so projects that you've completed, areas that are not relevant anymore, or resources, topics of interest that are not relevant to you anymore, that all go into your second brain. You can easily find them with search on almost any note-taking system. Search is great. So we wanna move all those in into the archive. And then also anything that doesn't fit, if, as you capture something, an article, um, if you have an idea, but it doesn't necessarily fit in the other three categories, you'll just throw it in archive and you can access it later. So as you capture information, it's no longer the library method where you're trying to find a topic or a subtopic within that or a sub subtopic. You're simply just asking yourself a few questions to figure out, is this a project? Is this an area or is it a resource or does it need to go in archive? So let's, let's break it down for a second. When you have an idea, a thought, or you come across a quote in a book, whatever it is, you're gonna ask yourself first, does this have anything to do with a project 
that I'm working on? Is this related to a project that I'm working on? If yes, then you will link that or you'll add it to the project note. Um, if no, you move to the second question is, and that is, does this relate to an area of my life? If yes, you'll link it to that area, or again, you can add it to a note directly on the note if that's the way you do it. Um, and if no, then you move again to the resources or the topics of interest. Does this relate to a topic of interest for me? And again, same thing. If yes, you will add it or link it to that area, uh, sorry, that resource. Or if no, then you'll move it to archive. And I will say that one piece of content can be actually for all three buckets, right? It could relate to the project that you're currently working on. And it also could relate to an area of your life. And it also could relate to a passion. It doesn't mean that because it fits into a project that it doesn't fit into other areas as well or other um, buckets. All right, now that you've organized the information, now it's time to distill it. The whole goal of distilling is to be able to make it easy to find whenever you need it, right? It's about discoverability. And the way that you make it more discoverable is by pulling out the essential meaning of the information that you have captured. Some of the ways that you can distill are by bolding and highlighting uh, certain phrases and keywords inside of the note. If it's an article, you know, you can start with bolding. You can, then you can go back through the bolded statements and highlight the ones that are really sticking out to you out of the bolded statements. Another way you can make it more discoverable is by writing a one sentence summary above the information that you captured, right? And then in, in your own words. So you'll write that at the, at the top, and that way, when you are scanning your notes and you come across it, you can easily see what is this note about without actually diving into the article or the, whatever it is. And then something else you can do is write specific titles for your notes. This helps me a ton when I'm scanning and going through my, my notes and I'm just scrolling and I'm, I'm looking or I'm searching and I see all the titles pop up. The more specific it is, the more easier it is for me to know oh, this is something that I need. And I will say that the whole idea here is for this to be a natural flow of your life. This is not something where you block out four hours to distill the notes that you've captured. You just simply distill as you come across them. And each time that you come across them, you make them a little bit more discoverable with the things that I mentioned. It's all about trusting the process and knowing that eventually you'll come across this note again. It's not lost, it's in your second brain, but when you need it, it'll come up again and you can make it discoverable then. All right, so we've gone through the three stages. We've captured the information, we have organized it, and we've distilled the information, and this all of these three stages lead to what the whole goal is, and that is expressing or creating or sharing. My friend, you were made to create and to design and to build and to produce something. You are a maker. I don't know how you make things. There are tons, millions of ways that you can make things. But the fact is, is that you are a maker and there's nobody else like you. So you get to share your flavor with the world, right? When you come across something that inspires you, you write it down, you organize it, you put it in your words, you make it discoverable, and then eventually you're able to share that. Maybe it's a new business that you start, or maybe it's simply just a conversation with a friend. Either way, you get to share and add value to somebody's life because you've gone through the process of the code method. Now, if you want to take a deep dive into how I set up my notes following this code method, check out this next video on how I organize my digital notes to remember, connect, and create.